First of all, trends at the speed of culture, obviously, uh, it's incredibly difficult to stay on top of culture when it becomes uh, apparent to a brand. Uh, especially if you work in an agency, you're working with different brands, you have to understand different audiences. And there's no doubt that having a true understanding of your audience makes better creative, makes you a better designer. Uh, typically, you would have to do this through a ton of desk research, uh, but what we're showing is we can actually leverage uh, AI models to help uh, basically do that research. So, let's pretend that we're working for uh, Assassin's Creed in the marketing department, and you want to understand what is the current sentiment around Assassin's Creed. Uh, this is a model trained on Reddit data. Here you can see it's uh, brought through a, a trend of nostalgia. So uh, players are relating to more of the vintage uh, graphics that are coming out. Um, you can have a conversation with the data rather than having to analyze it. Or in this tool, we've actually got the tool that can help to write the questions for you. So. Why this is important is because not everybody is, is a trained researcher, but through this tool, we enable more people to get a better analysis of what's happening with that brand. In the tools, we're also developing uh, different ways to kind of handhold you through the process in order to turn what would be a trend uh, or a, a theme and how that would uh, turn itself into an insight. So by leveraging the tool, you have an assistant that is essentially a strategy partner. Now what that does is, the way that we see it, it kind of uh, allows for a skill boost. So if you're a designer, you might have this type of skill set. So high in communication, high in creativity, uh, strategy, et cetera. What we're saying with the tools, what we're seeing is overnight, you can actually improve the skill capacity of your team or of your individuals. So through the tool, now you can do more market research yourself, so therefore you can develop uh, ideas that are more in tune with consumers. Now we're not saying that this replaces a strategy department, but wouldn't it be amazing as, as if you're designing something, you can actually understand how that is being relevant to the audience that you're talking about. And, uh, I don't know if it's going to hit, probably won't, but um, yeah, it's something like this. Let's go. <laughs> totally didn't hit, okay. <laughs> but it's that sort of ability to uh, get an instant cognitive boost of like what's happening. So I'll pass it back to Callum for some validation. So I had a relatively fortu fortuitous conversation yesterday with someone that we work with in, in surveying. Uh, and audience testing for creative. Uh, and they effectively told me that the, te the creative testing side of their business right now is way down, uh, and they are testing much less creative this year than they did last year, uh, and they're doing much more things like government polls and uh, um, surveys for um, uh, media research and, and stuff like that. Uh, and I think um, recently we've seen probably quite a lot of obvious creative that's gone to market without audience testing. Uh, and people are doing it, because, not doing it as much as they used to because it's super expensive and time consuming. And if you're having to turn around to a client that's given you a four week turnaround and say, we need two and a half weeks of that to test with the audience, it just doesn't fly. So people can't do it. People are taking shortcuts um, to validate their concepts. Um, one thing that we found quite early on that AI is really, really good at is adopting a perspective. And the more information you feed it about that perspective, the better it becomes and the more, um, uh, the more it adheres to that persona that we give it. Um, so what we're doing at this moment in time is building whole arrays of audiences built on real data that um, create synthetic people, if you like, that you can test your creative ideas on. So you can quickly eliminate the ideas which aren't working or that won't land uh, and um, move to the ones that will for the right market. Because you know people say things like there's no such thing as a bad idea. Um, that might be true, but the reality is there are bad ideas for certain audiences, right? And so if we can get past that point really quickly for literally next to no cost, 
then we're in a really good place to do some more considered testing later, or we're in a really good place to make good assumptions about how we're going to work. So this is an example of um, like the types of array that we tend to build into all of the tools that we're um, delivering for our clients, which is synthetic personas. So these ones, we base them on CAN judges. So they were trained on the feedback that uh, CAN judges have given uh, and award entries. So what you can do is you can submit an idea uh, to them, and then as that particular persona, they will tell you why they like it. They will give you a score. But instantly, the point is right, you will also see what all of the other scores are, maybe find some unexpected affinities, uh, maybe discover uh, some ways in which these audiences might suggest improvements because they do that too to make it more resonant to them. And in like this particular uh, example that we did for Cannes last year, um, we uh, put all of the um, titanium uh, entries into it for Cannes because it's a, it's a short, short list. So it was quite easy to do. Uh, and the, this judging panel uh, ranked the winners in the same order that the human judging panel did. Um, but what was interesting is not all of them liked it, like you might not remember, but it was the digital, the first digital nation, Tuvalu. Um, and we have one audience uh, member down there who's the futurist who was like, I don't like this idea because everybody's sort of ignoring the fact that a whole country is going to be underwater because of global warming, and they're leveraging that for the creative. So it's not like it's unanimous or you get like all of these kind of ringing harmonious voices. There's real contrast between the personas and they adopt it and stick to it really well. Um, this is a big unlock for creatives, right? Being able to just fire ideas at these audiences and then... Uh, uh, and then move on to the next one. Thank you. And, you know, finally, uh, we see uh, creative guidelines being a kind of huge blocker. So, you know, there's lots of guidelines in terms of what performs best, uh, especially with YouTube or TikTok videos, for example. And, you know, no one really wants to read that, I don't think. Uh, and especially people don't want to be told to change your script because it's not going to be effective. So what we've found is by uh, taking uh, all of those specifications and those best practices, we can train models that help creatives to basically improve their work and nudge it. And because it's not, there's not a human telling you to do something, it it's actually gets a better reception. So this is an example of uh, taking a uh, video script. Um, that video script has been analyzed against certain metrics like brand, direction, attention, uh, and from that video script, the model is able to make suggestions in terms of like how you would improve it in order to improve the brand uh, uh, impact, and so it becomes uh, a more effective video. Um, so these are just the kind of start of what we're looking at. We're also developing tools like this that help um, uh, content adhere to brand guidelines, uh, to best practices for DEI and other components like that. So we see these assistants as sort of being just really a gentle nudge for creatives to essentially improve their work and really just focus on creativity and not have to um, get bogged down with a lot of other considerations. So everything we've shown you here, you know, they're, they're kind of big, meaty projects. You know, we're, we're developing these projects for Brands, like I said, it takes a bit of work, but you don't have to kind of go full in like that. And so for anyone that hasn't really started to dive in, we wanted to show you maybe some other options. And so... Um, you've got a few choices about what you do, right? Like, I mean, one is a bit of a red herring. Some people are doing it, though, right? Um, holding off and not doing anything. Um, there are some brands who've had like, high-profile incidents feeding uh, sensitive information into uh, open models, and then that information being spat back out to members of the public. And things like this like, obviously damage the concept around it and maybe make people hold and wait and not do anything. But the reality is there's not a lot of excuse for that. Like Everything that we build is private and secure, and it's not that hard to... Uh, do that. And the reality is if you wait and sort of see how the dust is going to settle, the vast majority of big brands are moving on and, and working with this technology now and doing stuff 
with it. So the time to get familiar with it and the time to start leveraging it is now. 